What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here back again with another video. Today I'm going over some more recent trade rumors and just updating you guys on some of the talk um, that's been going around on uh, social media, on TV, specifically Twitter. People are going nuts on Twitter, but there's a lot of quotes being thrown out there. There's a lot of names being thrown out there, and I kind of want to get to the bottom of a couple names here and really, you know, both of us here can try to agree if whether or not this is a fit for the Toronto Maple Leafs, whether or not it makes sense. Um, and hopefully you guys will comment down below, have a good conversation with myself and other people. Um, and if you are new here, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Thank you to all the people that have been subscribing. But I know there's a ton of people because I can I can see the statistics. There's a ton of people that aren't subscribed that are watching. If you love trade rumor stuff, uh, news regarding the Toronto Maple Leafs, this is the channel for you and there's other channels as well. But I mean, hey, you can subscribe to a bunch. I'd really appreciate it. But uh, let's waste no more time. Um, but yeah, that does help me a lot and it's completely free. So let's get into this. So basically, the the recent talk um, that's been going around today that I specifically wanted to talk about um, is regarding a couple names. So John Klingberg of the Dallas Stars and of course, JT Miller of the Vancouver Canucks. Now we've briefly talked about both of these names on this channel. I can't say briefly, we've talked about them a couple of times, but as new information comes out and more and more people start to check in and more and more people start to speak on it, there's more discussion, not just, you know, behind the scenes, but with us fans and, and you know, writers, reporters, whatever. Uh, and basically what's been talked about here um, is that Elliot Friedman um, has, has been basically saying that both of these guys have been you know, at least talked about within the Toronto Maple Leafs. So um, the Leafs already added Labushkin, as we know, on their blue line. And Elliot Freeman believes that they aren't finished t uh, trying to tinker with their blue line. So obviously, Jake Muzzin being on long-term injured reserve will open, you know, over $5.3 or $5.5 .5 million in cap space. I think it's 5.2 something or 5.3, regardless. The Leafs are going to have probably just shy of $6 million to work with because um, they got as close to the cap as humanly possible to try to get more uh, money for the trade deadline, which is completely smart. Now, the other thing I do want to add to you guys here is, is just because it says $6 million doesn't mean the Leafs can get teams to retain some money. Uh, and then they could obviously add even more if teams are willing to eat up a contract. So if the cap hit would be $3 million, and the Leafs were able to get a team to retain 50%, the Leafs would only be charged with a cap hit of $1.5 million. So keep that in mind. The Leafs get out a few different pieces as long as they want to trade those uh, futures and, and whatever else. So the Leafs can add a bunch. But with Jake Muzzin out, they have that cap space. Of course, now the names are starting to to flood in here. So the first one um, was, was Klingberg previously. And, um, you know, he hasn't had the greatest year this year. Uh, his his cap hit right now is $4.25 million. Now, he is a more offensive-minded defenseman. He's on the last year of that contract. Dallas still might be able to hold on to him. We'll have to see. But it seems as though the Leafs have circled back to that. You can see previously he's put up pretty big numbers as a defenseman. He, he racks up a bunch of assists. He scores a lot on the power play. But his numbers have slowly started to go down a little bit. Now, people will see the 36 and 53. That's a really solid season, obviously, with a shortened season. Um, with a full season, he's probably touching 50 points pretty easily. Uh, and then, you know, this year, he, he hasn't had the greatest year, but still 26 and 44. Um, there's a lot of forwards on a lot of teams that don't achieve those numbers. So Klingberg would be a guy that I think the Leafs could be interested in if they are going for that offensive mind. Uh, minded replacement on the second pairing and I think there's two sides to this you can get a guy like Klingberg and if Muzzin comes back you can pair them together because Muzzin will play the defensive style uh, and Klingberg can you know have that offensive style the problem that's been with Jake Muzzin is sure he can play on a strictly shutdown pairing but if they don't have a guy that can move the puck out of the zone a guy that can you know move the puck out of the zone with a with a big pass or skate the puck out themselves it kind of it kind of negates the whole defensive to offense um, type of structure. You need you still need a puck carrier to get that puck out, even if it's you know you're gonna have forwards there obviously, but you want a defenseman that can do that. And I think Klingberg would be a guy 
that could do that. Now, I'm not sure how elite he still is at doing those things, um, but from what I've seen, from what I've watched, from what I've read, um, because I do I do try to watch games from around the league now, but I don't know, this is completely off, completely off topic, but Leaf fans out there, if the Leafs lose, do you guys like watching games after? Because I don't. Sometimes I get really upset and I just don't watch hockey for at least a day. But um, anyways, that's that's completely besides the point. But just watching Klingberg, um, I've liked the way he's played. But uh, again, a bit of a down year and he's pretty much all offense, to be, to be completely honest with you. His defense hasn't been the greatest. Now, um, showing that, there is a account that says, please don't do it, Kyle. Now, these... Um, I believe this comes from a website, evolvinghockey.com, of course. So overall, 43 offense, 74 defense, 5. You can see his even strength offense hasn't been the greatest. His even strength defense has been pretty bad. Power play offense, amazing. Shorthanded defense, not the greatest, but that's kind of a not the greatest you know, chart to look at. Penalties, again, every player is going to have some wonky numbers for this, but this is why it's a little challenging. I think the Leafs could do better at, at acquiring a top four defenseman in terms of an all-around guy, or in my opinion, I would just rather them go the defensive route uh, because, you know, you still have guys like Sandine, you have Riley, um, you have, you know, potentially Lilligren if you let him loose a little bit to, to, to play a little bit more of the offensive side. Uh, and same thing with Dermott if you hold on to him as well. So I, I'm not I'm not really sold on Klingberg. I'll be honest with you guys. So we'll have to we'll have to see on that one. But the reason why this is a little bit um, newsworthy is because Elliot Freeman talked about it again. Um, so it says Freeman and RKB on the Leafs circling back to John Klingberg. People have told me that those conversations were not just like, "Hey, are you going to trade us, John Klingberg? What would you want?" I think they had some reasonably in-depth conversations, so I do think it's possible. So it has it hasn't just been a hey, like what's up? Like are you trading him? It's been like these are some of the pieces we'd be willing to move from, um, and this is you know how much we're willing to pay type thing. Maybe there's there's some money being eaten up there. I have no idea, but. Klingberg is probably going to fetch a huge return if he is traded, and I'm not sure if that's the best way to use those assets. And speaking of that, JT Miller. Um, and before before Canucks fans go crazy here, I'm not one of these guys that's making these haul in a second round pick and Kerfoot for Miller thinking that this is a reasonable trade. I'm going to keep myself out of making a trade for JT Miller and, and thinking about, you know, what he's what he's potentially worth I know he's going to be worth quite a lot he's a guy with term he's a great hockey player but I'm going to keep myself out of making a mock trade I think he's going to be you know at least a first round pick plus some really good assets attached to that so I'm I'm not going to be throwing out names into this um, but I do believe that he would be worth a lot and again I'm not too sure that this is the the way that I want the Leafs to spend their assets and there's more that's attached to this as well so um, you can see that um, basically if they're they're going to upgrade their blue line and they're going to spend big you probably aren't getting a big forward cap hit uh, especially you know with these type of guys that have term because teams are not going to you know eat half of the salary for a few years so Miller is signed through next season as well for 5.25 million dollars before coming before becoming a UFA so he's capable of playing both center and wing as we know 20 goals 37 assists and 51 games played this year so um, he noted that the 20 year old likely isn't Toronto's top priority because I do think the Leafs top priority is still the blue line um, so I can definitely agree with that if I have any say in it but like I said 5.25 million dollar cap hit he's got that for this year and next and as we talked about there with the points he's having a wicked year since coming to Vancouver he's been really good but he's been good like his entire career it's just now he's starting to put up a little bit uh, you know better numbers so um, this is something I do want to bring up though so um, over the last three seasons, the Canucks Army posted Miller at 171 points, 5.25 million. Marner, 180 at 10.9. The problem with this is that if you look back at the past four seasons, Mitch Marner actually has been playing better in less games. So you just have to pick, and this is no diss to the Canucks. This is, this is me just saying for both sides, to Leaf fans and Canucks fans, 
Canucks fans are going to choose pick and choose stats and numbers and whatever. Leaf fans are going to do the same thing. There's not going to be a common ground here because the Leafs don't want to give up everything. The Canucks want everything. And that's fair because if you're a fan of those teams, you obviously want your team to have the best end of the deal. It's ridiculous to think that, you know, we can agree on something like this because there's Canucks Canucks fans that are literally tweeting that they'd rather JT Miller leave for nothing than trading him to the Toronto Maple Leafs. So there's there's not going to be a common ground here. What I will say is on behalf of a Leaf fan that thinks JT Miller's fantastic and that he should be worth quite a bit, there are some trade rep- uh, proposals that I think are kind of ridiculous. The Leafs, the Leafs can't afford to give up that much. Even if they wanted to, it would like there's no reason for them to do it. It would be a massive overpay um, in terms of not just be not just for JT Miller, but in general, the Leafs just can't afford to do that in terms of their futures. They need to keep as many of these cost controllable young guys as they can, which might pull them out of the top end. Um, top end like guys that are available here because I think Miller who has term who's a guy that the the Canucks necessarily don't have to move is going to cost a lot more than what some teams are willing to pay Um, so you you know you can come up with your trade proposals the Leafs can do the same thing Leaf fans can do the same thing but at the end of the day you guys are just Twitter you know, Twitter trade armchair GMs. I'm a YouTube armchair GM. I make videos for fun. You guys tweet for fun. We all do it. We're all just doing this for fun. We're not the ones making the trade. The GMs and people in the NHL decide that regardless of if you think it's right or wrong, we have no say, absolutely no say in this in terms of how the deal would happen. But I'm here to tell you, I'm just going to take a bet that the Leafs do not sign do not sign. Do not trade for JT Miller. I I, I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, they're going to be really far apart. It, they're going to be really, really far apart. I don't think it's it's going to happen. Um, I, I The reason why I'm saying this is because I also think the Canucks can't sell their fans that they're trading away their, their top player right now, um, considering next year they're going to need him. So I don't really understand why they would do that. So why not go to the secondary market? Go go to guys that are more cost controllable, more guys that you could get for a cheaper price that do a lot of good things. I brought up Mark Pissick before, a cap hit of $900,000. He has said that he wants to play in Buffalo. Just trade for him and let him sign back in Buffalo next year. Who cares? The Leafs need a guy that can play 20 minutes a night, that can be a shutdown defenseman. Mark Pissick is a darling at that. He's amazing at being a shutdown guy. So cheap cap hit, probably definitely aren't paying as much as some of these other guys. You're not going to pay as much as you're paying for Klingberg or Miller or any of those guys, and you get them for less than a million bucks. Who knows? Maybe you make them eat a little bit more money, and you can spend more money on a forward. Maybe a guy like Max Domi, $5.3 million. I'm sure the Leafs would ask for them to eat some of that money. He's a UFA at the end of this contract. And uh, 24 points in 42 games played, you know, not earth shattering, but he's tied his point total from last year already. Um, So definitely a guy that I would be interested in if I'm the Leafs. You want a bit of grit. You want a guy that can play hard. Um, I I think that Max Domi would be a good fit. Not my top priority. He wouldn't be a guy that I would go after right away. But if I'm going to say in this video that I would want the Leafs to maybe target some, some guys that wouldn't cost as much. I have to show you some examples. And that's just two guys. If the Leafs could get Columbus to eat some of that money, uh, they could acquire more pieces than just Max Domi. They could get a Max Domi. They can get a Mark Pissick. They could get somebody else. It's about creating as much opportunity and as much, um, you know, cap space and and controllable assets as you can um, in order to make your team that much better. And I'm not saying that these are, like I said, I'm not saying these are my top two picks of guys that I would want. Mark Pissick is definitely in my top two, for sure. Max Domi, I would have to do more research on who else is out there, but he would probably be a guy that I'd be really interested in, depending on how much the Leafs can get Columbus to, to eat on that cap hit. So, just wanted to give you guys my thoughts on Klingberg, Miller, um, Pissick, Domi. Just trying to give you guys options in terms of thinking about how the Leafs could upgrade this team. Because I think there's a lot of different ways they can. Um, I ultimately think they are going to make a couple moves. I don't think it's going to be one. I think it's between you know two to four moves that they're going to make. Especially if Muzzin is out long term. Um, which we're going to knock on wood. Because ultimately... 
And another thing I do want to add too is that we shouldn't be we shouldn't be looking at this team and thinking, yeah, like who cares about Muzzin? Oh, just trade, you know, trade Kerfoot for more money. You need to you need to add on top of your talent. You know, Muzzin with two months of rest before the playoffs, he he could come back and and just be amazing. You know, fully rested. Kerfoot is having a career year. We need that. We need that depth. So trade a Justin Hall and get that extra two million, or trade a Travis Dermott and get that extra one point five million, and that's the extra little bit of money that you can get and have over seven million dollars in cap space. That's just all I'm saying. I wouldn't trade a Kerfoot. Um, or not care about a Jake Muzzin coming back because people think he sucks. He he got burnt out. He's got so many injuries, he's got burnt out. If he comes back and he's still bad, then the Leafs probably need to explore something else with him. But that's for not for now. The Leafs need to go out there and add to this team. You cannot convince the guys in that locker room that they need to pry away guys that have been so good for them all year. Unless you're getting significantly better. If you're not getting significantly better, then what's the point of getting rid of your depth? It makes no sense to me. So let me know what you guys think down below. Um, if you are new here, like this video and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Join the squad. Thank you guys so much for over 11,000 subscribers. We just hit that and we've got over 300 new subscribers as well. Um, yeah, like I said, subscribing does help me a ton. Liking the video does help a ton as well. Um, I love and appreciate you guys as always. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video or stream. Peace.